So now I'm going to have a go at the next uh, lesson nine of Codility. The first exercise is called Max Double Slice Sum. Uh, it's a respectable task, uh, so it may be a little bit tricky, but let's get straight into it. Okay, a non-empty array A consisting of N integers is given. A triplet X, Y, Z such that zero is less than or equal to X, which is less than Y, which is less than Z, which is less than N, is called a double slice. The sum of a double slice X, Y, Z is the total of A, X plus one to A, X plus two to A, Y minus one plus a y plus one to a y plus two to a z minus one okay so x y z are three values of the array that we're going to miss out okay so the for example array a such that here is the array contains the following example double slices double slice zero three six is this three six contains two six four and five okay so zero and then we have two six three then we have four five and then six the sum is 17 double slice zero three seven gives us two six plus four five minus one is 16 double slice three four five there's nothing in between any of these, so the sum is zero. The goal is to find the maximum sum of any double slice. Write a function that given a non-empty array A consisting of N integers returns the maximal double, maximum sum of any double slice. So in that example, it should return 17. Write an efficient algorithm for the following assumptions. N is an integer within the range of 3 to 100,000. Okay, so 3 because we have to be able to select a triplet from it. And each element in the array A is an integer within the range of minus 10,000 and 10,000. Okay, so what I'm going to do is from the start, I'm going to loop through from position 1 and work out what the maximum slice at this point ending at this point can be so for position one the maximum slice can be two and at position two the maximum slice can be eight at the next position the maximum slice could be seven at the next position it can be eleven um, now the maximum slice would be the maximum between the previous sum or the previous maximum slice value plus this value or just this value because if this was a negative value for example if this was negative 2 the maximum slice at that point could be negative 2 then at the next point wouldn't be 6 plus negative 2 because it could just be this so it would be 6 then I'm going to do the same in the other direction to work out what the ending could be so at this point the maximum slice going forward would be minus 1 at this point it would be 5 because we would get rid of that minus 1 and I'll keep going through like that ignoring the first and the last values because we need x to be at least 0 so we're going to skip that value whatever and likewise z is less than n so we're going to skip that value whatever then when I've got the maximum values starting at each point and the maximum values ending at each point I can just loop through again skipping out the y value and saving the maximum so that's the plan uh, so let's see if I can do that so ok 
Okay, so I've just put the example in the solution when the exercise description in there. Right. So I'm going to make a new array. S for start. And I'm going to make it the same length as A. make another array e for ends and I'm gonna make that the same length as the array so starts um, so I'm gonna populate the starts array with the maximum value that can end at that point so I'm gonna loop through the array forget about position zero i is less than a dot length minus one because i'm forgetting about the end as well and i'm going to say the starts array at position i equals the maximum value between a at position i which would mean we're throwing away everything before or the maximum value that we found in the previous loop plus a at position i and for the ends array Coming in from the end, I'm going to say math.max of a, a length minus i. So I'm just doing the same in the opposite direction by subtracting the index from the length of the array. And e at a length minus i plus one plus that value a a length minus one so there in one loop maybe I should have done two loops to make it a bit less confusing but this is coming from the start and it's setting the value to be the maximum value of the previous maximum value plus this value in a or just this value in a and I'm doing the same in the opposite direction so coming in from the end and then I just need to loop through again from 1 i is less than a length minus 1 i plus plus and this is a value that we're going to skip out so here I'm going to save int max equals zero and say max equals the maximum between s at this index minus one and e plus e at the index plus one or the previous maximum value and return max I think that's right but um, I'll just test that and we get an index out of bounds exception so I've done something wrong there uh, so to make this a bit less confusing I'm gonna put the and i equals a length minus two because I want to mix miss the end. A is greater than zero. I is greater than zero. I minus minus and then e at i 
is math.max of a at i and e at i plus one plus a at i. Okay, so that again is just the same as that, but coming in from the other end. Let's see if that's fixed it. 17, and I think that that was the right answer. So I'm just going to debug through that and um, re-explain that because I think that that is a bit confusing. So we make two arrays, S and E. So at S index one, the maximum value we can have is two. Then at the next index, the maximum value is two plus six, which is eight. At the next index, the maximum value is two plus six plus minus one is seven. And then we're going to have 11 for the next one. And there's 11. Then 11 plus 5 is 16. And then 15. And then we can skip the end value. Coming in from this side, the maximum value, we can't use a 2. The maximum value at this point is minus 1 minus one then this maximum value is five so this is why we're doing math.max because we don't need to keep the minus one so the next step is five then the next step in we have nine next step in we have eight next step in have 14 then 15 16 and we can skip the last one now we need to work through these two arrays now working out if we skip a point so this i that we're trying to find now is the optimum y value uh, in the XYZ triplet. So we're going to work through for the first time. So at the first point, we would have two on this side. We'd skip one and we would have eight on that side. So it would be, hang on, now we have came up with a value 14. So we had zero on that side and 14 on that side next time we're going to consider two on that side and eight on that side so we'll still stick with 14 next time eight on that side and nine on that side which is the 17 value that we're looking for and then the rest of the time we're just going to stick with 17 and that is the result okay so i think that that's right um so i'm going to submit that and hopefully uh we'll see how that does so it's definitely efficient um we know n, n is an integer of at least three, um, so it just won't loop through if um, if it's th three uh, negative values. They're not going to hurt it. Um, so I can't see any corner cases that can trip it up. So I think that's right. So I'm going to run the test first. I know it's going to pass this. Um, yeah, so let's submit it and see how it does. Seventy six percent. So let's see what's tripped it up. Simple one and simple two.
Okay, so for the input 0, 10, minus 5, minus 2, 0, we got 8, we expected 10. Okay, so let's just run that through it. So let's run that through it and see. it does so let's run up to here ah at any point we can um have zero because we could have a slice so the slice could be zero two three and it in between any there's always going to be the possibility of having an empty slice so um, if s i is less than zero s i should equal zero and the same applies for e So we never have to have a negative slice because we can always just have a zero slice. So I think that that should now give us 10. Yeah. So I'll just resubmit that. So there sort of was a, uh, well, it's not really a corner case, but um, I did get tripped up there. So let's go back into this and resubmit it and see if that's fixed it. I'm 100%, so I'm reasonably happy with that. It did take me two attempts, but it was a respectable task, so I'm happy with that. That's my solution to the max double slice sum problem in Codility. Thanks for watching.